This episode and every episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Ironmonger Brewing. Visit Ironmonger at their tap room in Marietta, Georgia, or online at ironmongerbrewing.com. Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yo, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios in Marietta, Georgia. This is episode 205 of the show, and we're talking with Chelawasi Beer Company. I'm Tim Dennis, and with me as always is my good friend and co-host, Mr. Brian Hewitt. Hey, Tim. So joining us today, we have Casey Workman. The, he is the owner of Chelawasi Beer Company. We're going to talk about the beer scene in Peru because he's based in Peru and probably a lot of uh, Latin America in general. And we've got some interesting big beer news this week. Casey, thank you for joining us. Thanks, guys. We're looking at the beer news, Brian. That's it's yes. just crazy stuff this oh, week. Oh, it's absolutely. It's madness. It's yeah. Yeah. Now, it's, Casey, your your brewery, or I, we say brewery, but I know we'll dive into that a little bit more, but the actual name is Chelawasi Public House and Beer Company. Is that right? We've got a little bit of an identity crisis. Okay. Okay. It through. happens. Yeah. There's a deep sigh there, so there must be a story. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's just, uh, yeah, it's it's funny how things change when you have a business and a vision and, you know, different things happen and different things come up. We started as Grateful Brewing. I, we were going to be the Grateful Brewing Company. Right. And uh, we got down to, to Peru and turns out Latinos can't really say grateful. Oh, okay. Or, oh. Or, or brewing either. That's why we, we went to, so we started up the Chelawasi Public House. Chelawasi, Chela is Peruvian slang for beer. And Wasi is Quechua, the native language here in, in the Andes, uh, for house. So Chelawasi Beer Company. Beer is a very international, very familiar word to everybody's palate, no, everybody's mouth. Sure. So that ended up working a lot better than great food brewing. Yeah. I could see that. That's I was going to ask about that a little bit uh, because I saw in one of the interviews I read with you where it said Grateful Brewing would be coming. So that that answers that question. We're we're answering questions right out the gate, Brian. <laughs> yeah, indeed. We're and he explained the name uh, to us, and I had thought because I did put it through Google Translate that it was Swahili, Swahili. for chorus because right. it does translate. It seriously, <laughs> and I'm not making it up. Translates to Beer chorus. chorus. <laughs> exactly. There and so I was thinking you need to do a collaboration beer with some African brewery and just call it Shalawasi. Could you be. Know? Yeah, it would, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. That's a great idea, Brian. It's fantastic. <laughs> always working your magic there, aren't you? I am. I'm yeah. always giving away the really horrible ideas. I have. Yes, yes, yes. So kind of you. Those well, Brian, free. we had, yeah, yeah, those are free. No <laughs> charge. No charge. We had a good week, Brian. We got to check out a couple of new breweries yep. across the state. We went uh, up north, north Georgia, north-ish to uh, uh, Forsyth County. Right? Yeah. We're reinforcing North so. Forsyth. Or Fel Fulton. Isn't it Fulton? No, I think it's Forsyth. Because it there's be. no foe. No foe. Not no pho. I know the no part is north. Yes. I don't know what the foe is. North yeah. Forsyth. No okay. foe brew co. Okay. And we went up there and checked them out. What a gorgeous brewery. Yeah. What a cool spot. Big open front yard patio, big fire pit there. It was a little cool. We're getting we're getting crispy down here in Georgia, so a little cool that night. But uh went up there. I really like their coffee pour. So I that, did as that well. Was a tasty one. Enjoyed that. So we had a good time there. We also something really cool we did just recently is a brew pub that's been highly anticipated in Atlanta for quite a while. Uh, the Bold Monk Brewing Company uh, gave a preview, so we got to go check it out. And it's one that you remember when the company went bankrupt that was making the brew house equipment. Oh uh, yeah, I forget the name of them right now. But when they went bankrupt, the owner of the Bold Monk, their stuff was tied up. Their stainless yes, tanks and all that were right. tied up there with that. So that gave them a little bit of delay, but they got open. Great menu, gorgeous space, huge brew pub. It is a library, bookstore, retail shop, coffee house, they get a coffee restaurant, house as well. brew pub. So they had pour really over cool. coffee on the menu, which excited me a great deal. But uh, yeah. I didn't get to try that because that wasn't ready just yet. So yeah. Tasty food. They yeah. Had, uh, we had rabbit carbonade. Yes. There. That was really good, but that was... That was pretty cool. You were a big fan of that Bouillabaisse Bay's pizza? Bouillabaisse Bay's pizza with some mussels and yeah. shrimp and fresh herbs and a nice tomato sauce. So it was tasty. They haven't, uh, as of now, 
have not announced an official opening date, but it should be soon. They're just kind of fine-tuning things. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah. Did you get into anything else this week, Brian? I did, and I didn't mean to double down on it. It just kind of happened that way, but I all, I wound up at Max Loggers uh, a few days prior to that after having gone to a, a Chris Crindle market. I think it's, it's a German Christmas market, drinking some glue vine and uh, walking around looking at the little interesting uh, – ornaments and other fun uh, German eat, eats and, I don't know, crafts, I guess is the okay. best way to put it. So that was fun. I wound up over at Mox Lagers. I actually had the the same Atomic Frog, I believe, that we had at the Bold Monks. So I, I doubled down on that this week. Okay. So Good yeah, stuff. that was that was pretty much it, you know. Okay. Brother. Casey, anything exciting in uh, Peru this week? This week? Thank God, no. Uh, no, the, not the, this week. Huh? The, the, <laughs> Copa, the Copa just left. I got back from about month and a half ago two months ago we've been running since i got back from portland i did my uh, little scouting tour for for a tour that we're going to do for latinos cool awesome of, that's of right the, of the portland brewing scene so yeah Thanks since then time. no we've been packed 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 then we had the copa and then everybody left on sunday and no we've been yeah we it's been nice it's been nice having a few days to just do regular regular work a little downtime sometimes that's the greatest thing that can happen in a week. Kicking sure. back and enjoying Kicking a beer, maybe? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just regular workload. Just regular workload. Right. But yeah, exactly. yeah. We do, we do enjoy ourselves. That's why we do this. Well, Tim, I think it's time for the beers of the week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Well, Brian, as always, we have a good selection of beers. A new one from our friends here at Ironmonger. They just put a couple on in the tap room here. I think these are tap room exclusives, but they have one called Blue Monday, Blueberry Stout that they put on. And they've got a Vienna Lager. And I think their Anvil just returned, right? Didn't you get some of that? I got some of that and uh, Tasty. And I think it came back actually last week, but I didn't get to it until this week. So, So some new stuff here at Ironmonger. We are currently sipping... The Creature Comforts Beardist Iris collab that they did uh, with Manchester Orchestra. Now, I did notice the packaging doesn't say anything about Manchester Orchestra from what I've seen. But I know this is one when we had Tim Vary from Manchester Orchestra on the show not long ago. He mentioned they'd be doing this. And I do know that that is the one that they serve, they served at their The Stuffing show that they did down at the Fox Theater. Okay. So this is a hazy double IPA. Getting into that, we also have a little Brooklyn black chocolate stout and brian i think you've got one from wild leap called partners in crema yes that's a coffee stout with cocoa and coconuts all right so we're gonna and we dipped into the finest whiskey in the world brian yes apparently. according to is it whiskey advocate uh yes it's whiskey advocate yeah so the george dickel bottled in bond not an expensive one either sometimes no. you think best in the world you're going to see these crazy prices but i think we paid around 45 for it here in Georgia. Yeah, it, nearby it. about 45 so, bucks. Not yes. Bad at all. So that's it. Some beer and whiskey for us this week. Good stuff, Brian. So why don't you tell us what's happening in the news? What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. All right. So the biggest news of the week and maybe of the year Constellation Brands is selling Ballast Point to Chicago based Kings and Convicts. And if you're scratching your head right now, want asking who? You're not alone because everybody else is asking the same thing. Prior to the announcement of the sale, they were virtually unheard of outside of Chicago and parts of Wisconsin where they they do distribution. I did a quick check of their untapped page just to see how big they are. And as of now, or when I checked anyway, the total was 7,000 check-ins plus a little bit, but total for all of their beer. So they're very small. So we're talking really small. As you might have guessed, things are going poorly for Ballast Point under Constellation Brands ownership. Sales of the brand dropped 13% in 2017 and 15% in 2018. And I'm sure 2019 wasn't really rosy for them either. So I can tell you anecdotally, I don't see Ballast Point around on the shelves nearly as much as I did a few years ago when they were sold. So that's definitely not a good thing. The sale completes at the end of fiscal year 2020, at which time Kings and Convicts will take over the main production facility in Miramar, California, five brew pubs around California, and a brew pub in Chicago. And unsurprisingly, what everybody wants to know, the financial details of the deal are not being disclosed, but we are pretty sure they're not paying a billion dollars for it. No, no. Constellation did not make their money back on this one. They didn't, but they're looking on the bright side. This clears their plate so they can focus on important things like Corona hard seltzer, Tim. You know what? That I'll tell you what. When I read that <laughs> comment, Brian, I got a little upset because it's so ridiculous that you'd put that kind of money into a brand, a respected craft beer brand, and just let it go down the drain. Literally, they busted open barrels and poured them down the drain. That's ridiculous. Of some of their beer 
so you can focus on stuff like imported uh, lagers and hard seltzers. Madness. Crazy stuff. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take a quick break, but we'll be back very soon to talk more with Chelawasi Brewing Company. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing. Establishing a new standard in craft beer. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Oh, God, here we go again. Dork alert. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. If you miss an episode, don't worry. All episodes are available as a podcast. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting app and never miss a show. Now let's get back to our talk with Casey Workman of Chelawasi Beer Company. Chelawasi Beer Company. Yeah. Casey, thank you again for joining us, man. We really appreciate it today. Oh no worries, guys. I, I appreciate the the interest. It's it's been it's been a long road. You know how people. Yes, you yeah. know you know. So the way you and I met, quote unquote, is we're both on a Facebook group together, a brewing Facebook group. Yes, sir. And uh, you had shared some information about the first uh, brewery in Peru to sell out, right? Yeah. What what's the name of that one? Is it Bacchus? Bacchus. Bacchus is uh is the Peruvian arm of AB InBev. Okay. Gotcha. So right. they sold that Barba- Barbarian Brewing Company is the name, or Barbarian Brewing Company is the name uh, of the of the brewery they've been around about eight years. They just had their eight year anniversary, and actually the Latin American internet they have so many names. Like this dragon has so many heads, right? Right. So yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's some company that you wouldn't recognize, but it's another head of the AB InBev dragon. Okay. And I think you told me at the time that the attitudes towards these big company buyouts in Peru is a little different than necessarily the average American consumer, right? Well, I'm still trying to figure it out. I talked okay. to a bunch of the guys that came down, uh, some of the American guy, uh, Jeff Bagby, um, that came down to judge. And then another girl named Ashley and her husband, Bill, that came down, they have a, a logger house in Denver and they were kind of, I don't know, different stories from different sides. And then I talked to some people in Oregon as well, where, you know, so I kind of said, well, like when 10 barrel got bought out, like, what was it like? It was a beloved brand. 10 barrel was an Oregon favorite. Right. And they get bought out. And he said, they, most of the guys said, you know, there's kind of a hiccup couple two or three weeks and sales went back to normal and now it's just a regular place it's packed like any other place right that seems to be what's happening here you know you look in the barbarian bars and they're packed still you know they, there was a big kind of a oh everybody was shocked but after that dust settles it's hard to, to for people to argue with half price beers i guess i don't know that hasn't sure. quite happened yet we're still all kind of holding our breath but there's been some signs uh, part of their contract is they have to open up 15 to 20 pubs over the next two or three years, which means basically we're the second biggest town in Peru. There aren't that many big towns in Peru. There's a lot of little towns. So I don't know quite where they're going to put all those, but um, we're still kind of waiting and see, waiting to see what happens exactly. But it looks like the initial, what I talked to people in, in Oregon about kind of what happened with 10 Barrel and some other examples Looks like that's kind of what's happening here. Yeah. And you know, the thing is, is the people that really care a lot about that. And this is when you're on the online beer forums and that it's easy to get into an echo chamber that what you think is, is broad, you know, uh, very broad spread out there. 
but we're still a small percentage. You know, the craft beer drinkers are what do we have? Thirteen percent market share, Brian. So 12, Something nine, like that. 12, yeah, seven. it's it's not very big, really. Right, and then you think about the people who actually talk about it, follow the news, and care about this stuff. It's even small. It's a right. small. So, it's a right. tiny fraction yeah. of that thirteen percent. You look at that, yes. and it's uh, when you get that extended distribution, you get out there, you know, to more people, and even within the little echo chamber, there's still a lot of people that say, if the beer is good, I'm going to drink it. You know, oh so, yeah, so, it is yeah. what it is, man. But it it was interesting to see that it's not just America that that has breweries selling out there and having to deal with that. It looks like they're so, marching, marching across the globe to me. Yeah. Oh, they Go definitely are. Absolutely. But at least the people of Peru have good craft beer, like Chelawasi Beer Company, right? Sure, there you go. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. So how did you end up, uh, you're from Portland to Peru, uh, previously an electrician. Uh, can you give us a little overview of kind of your journey to starting a brewery? and public house in Peru? Uh, it was just nobody paying attention, really. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, Slid right past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, in Portland, I was an electrician. Um, I wasn't really super happy being an electrician. It was, a, you know, it's a good trade. I'm not talking bad about it. Uh, it's done a lot of good for me. But, um, but I wasn't super passionate about it. So uh, my brother went to Costa Rica on a sailboat in 96. And he was visiting, and uh, and I was kind of like, you know, what, what, why couldn't I just kind of go down there and be with you for a while, hang out? And he kind of just said, well, I don't know, you tell me. So that was kind of the the permission or the or the aha moment of of travel and, and world travel. So I headed to Costa Rica. I got there in '99, off and on in Costa Rica, trying to figure out how to make money <laughs> uh, <laughs> until about 2005, and then 2005 on. I was in Costa Rica till uh, 2013. I met my wife. Uh, she's from Lima, Peru. I met her. She was uh, in Costa Rica. And uh, we met and got married in Lima in 2013 and lived in Lima for a while. And, and it was just too big of a city for me. But the one thing I did notice in the biggest, one of the biggest cities in the world, really, they got 10 million people, no craft beer in 2014. There was wow. a little bit. There was okay. a little bit. Right. I didn't. I didn't find it right away. It took me a long time looking for it, um, but I found a company called Sierra Andina Brewing Company in Huaraz, Peru, which is about eight hours in the Cordillera Blanca, uh, the Andes uh, of Peru. And I went and visited them, and and it was a it was a sparse scene. There was a few people making beer. Nobody was, you know, super. I, not that I could tell it was super focused or super good at it at the time. I said, well, here's here's my, my opening. I've always liked to drink beer. I've always, you know, liked the culture, um, really enjoyed it. And here's my chance. Let's let we, like I said, nobody's paid attention. Let's let's see how far we can get before they before they kick us out. And we're still and here. <laughs> so are they paying attention now? Now we just we just won a couple of bronze medals. We won one in Chile okay. for for our Black Jesus, uh, the only Cascadian dark ale in South America that I know of. If anybody's listening that has one, contact us, please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, yep. And we won one for a, uh, a California Common that we did in in collaboration with a couple of breweries, one from Argentina and, and another one from Tacna, Peru, which is south of here. Okay, so how many breweries are there in Peru now? Like it, it sounded like there was like maybe one when you went went there initially in 2014, 2015. Sure. Where are you at now? Legit, well, it's, that's kind of it's complicated because it, legitimate breweries, legal breweries. Um, <laughs> that's a good not, point. Not that many people making beer in their bathtub and who knows what, uh, and selling it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot bigger number. Being able to sell your beer here is about a five hundred dollar. I don't know. Slip to a lawyer, a guy that's a quote uh, yes. lawyer. Yes. Oh, about yeah. about five hundred bucks to get up to get the legal right to sell beer here. So that's it, man. <laughs> they just they let you sell beer. So is that five hundred in the local currency, or really five hundred U.S. dollars that translates? Five hundred U.S. dollars to be legal to legally produce one style of beer. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, people don't pay attention to that. Like I said, there's probably three to four times people that just make beer and sell it out of their whatever. Um, but legitimate breweries actually forward momentum, really trying to get better and make their product better. Probably 40, 40, 50, 40, 50. Okay. In, in all, the, all the country. But then, like I said, kind of uh, informal breweries, probably another three or four times that. 
That's pretty interesting. So go go down there. You know, I can't I'm speaking totally out of my knowledge zone here, but I've heard that Latin America business is very interesting the way you conduct it and that. And we worked, you know, I work in telecom and we did a project in Mexico City and went out to a lot of smaller towns there. And a lot of them with the permitting, you go to do the permit and they're like, okay, the permit submitted, you know, we'll wait for approval. And they said, you'd have to do stuff like, you know, you take the, the guy approving it, you take him some dinner, you get him this and that. And did just for no reason at all, he'd show up on Friday and be like, all right, you're approved. You, yeah. <laughs> you, you can start work now. Yeah. Uh, there's un unfortunately that's uh that's a lot of Latin America for sure. All right. Um, luckily we haven't knock on wood. We haven't, uh, we haven't had fallen into that trap too much here, but yeah, that's definitely, it's definitely a big, big part of Latin American culture. Sure. I think it's that way anywhere. It's just a little more formalized than some other places, right? Well, that's what I always say is that, you know, in the States, we make the laws before they rob, right? They make the that's laws. right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take another break, but we'll be back very soon to talk more with Chelawasi Beer Company. Is your brewery or restaurant flooring all jacked up? Your foundation needs to be protected from heat, chemicals, and other contaminants. At the same time, you want to make sure it's slip resistant and you can clean up your messes with soap and water. You know who to call? ResTech. We've been manufacturing poured in place flooring since 2002 and we've got solutions to fit any facility's needs. Go on and visit our website at ResTech.net. That's R E S T E K.net. Drop us a line and we will come to you for a free evaluation. Oh, yeah. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're Storytime Construction, and we build breweries. We're Georgia's most experienced and hands-on contractors when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding existing breweries. We offer full build-outs, remodeling, and additions, as well as consulting and construction management. Give us a call at 770-733-4343. Storytime Construction. We build breweries. Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Cannonball, cannonball coming. Now back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to Beer Guys Radio Show. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our great radio affiliates, WNTK 99.7 FM in New London, New Hampshire. Catch Beer Guys Radio on WNTK every Saturday at 10 p.m. local time. Now back to our talk with Casey Workman from Chelawasi Beer Company. Casey, okay, so we've talked a little bit. You'd mentioned a couple times the Copa. Copa Latin American, is that correct? Copa Latin Americana, yeah. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, it's been, I think it's been around four years or five years. I'm not sure quite which, but um, I just started being a steward uh, at this thing. It was coming into town. Uh, the first year I went to it, it was in Cusco, which is the jump off part for Machu Picchu. And it was really great. It was just, uh, it's, it's the biggest, uh, it's the only, I think, uh, international judging competition in Peru. Ecuador has theirs, Mitad del Mundo. The South Beer Cup is the Chilean one, which is, uh, people tell me it's the biggest one uh, in Latin America. Brazil has uh, one, if not two, that are gaining a lot of popularity right now. People from the States, uh, like I said, Gordon Strong was here this week. Uh, John Palmer was there the first two years I was involved, kind of the, the star judge, but then a lot of other really good brewers, Matt Van Wick uh, from Ale Song. Just people are starting to show a lot of interest in Latin America. We've got uh, a lot of interesting fruits, a lot of interesting roots, uh, sugars, different traditions that uh, people are really starting to pay attention to. And uh, it's, it's, so it's an international beer competition. We get everybody from Mexico. We get uh, brewers from Mexico. We get people from Paraguay, Uruguay, uh, all over Latin America. And it's just a really good time. We have conferences. Uh, so people get to share their up-to-date knowledge. Like I said, we had John Palmer. He did his water talk. Gordon Strong did a, a, a talk on fruit beers, how to, how to use fruit in different beers. So this is really cutting edge information that's getting down here. So it's nice. It's nice for everybody. And then, you know, we have a big party. We all get to know each other. Uh, we have some competitions. Some people walk away with medals. It's really fun. 
So you mentioned some fruit, and I was intrigued. I, w- I went through your untapped list of, of various beers. I'm going to try to say the name of the beer, but I'm sure it's going to be wrong. It's like Uvia de Ticos. <laughs> it's an Oregon-style session IPA with tuna fruit, and I have to know what on earth is a tuna fruit. Yeah, so you Uvia de Ticos. Yeah, we get a little complicated with our beer names sometimes. It's kind of part of what I do. But um, so Uvia de Ticos, Uvia is, is rain, right? And Ticos are a little imported piece of crap Korean taxi. That, well, they used them for taxis. These little crappy cars that a corrupt official of the uh, 90s imported a bunch of these cars <laughs> to steal part, whatever money he could for, from that deal. And so it just flooded the whole country with these little yellow piece of crap car i think it's a daihatsu i think that daihatsu is the maker but it's this disposable car you get in a wreck you're dead for sure uh so they turn them all into taxis and so you'll be standing on the street corner and there's just nothing but these crappy yellow cars coming at you and you don't want to take any of them because you get in a wreck you're gonna die so <laughs> there's tons of ticos in 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 Arequipa, but there's no rain it doesn't rain here hardly and then in Oregon, there's tons of rain, but there's no ticos. So Uvia de Ticos, we made we made that was our beer. But with tuna, so tuna is prickly pear. There's, oh, okay. There's, there's a few different types of, of uh, fruit that come from cactuses, this in particular. And there's a couple different types of tuna. There's a red tuna. There's a green tuna. It has nothing to do with the fish. It's a uh, very pity, lots of seeds. The seeds are really hard, uh, but it's got a really nice taste. And uh, Oregon style session IPA with tuna, we used a lot of, um, I think we use Cascade, just Cascade and Chinook. So I use a lot of Cascade. I use, we, we tie ourselves to Oregon a lot um, just because that's where I'm from. It's authentic and that's who we like to be. So that's Casey. We talked a little bit earlier and I think it was off air about hazy beers and uh, whether or not those were popular in Peru. And you mentioned that yeast was a little tricky to get down there. Do you have a problem getting other ingredients are there is there a good variety of grains and hops and all of that in we have a t- we have a ton of problems getting all ingredients so everything's in dollars everything comes in in dollars so you have to take the local currency which is the peruvian soul uh, nuevo soul which means sun and you have to then ca- change that into dollars and you have to pay for everything with dollars so uh as the pl- there's all kinds of factors that go on. You got shipping things. There's different prices. They change. Hops fluctuate super, super, super fast. And then if our dollar, if our Nuevo Sol fluctuates, then we also get dinged on the the, the exchange rate. So yeah, that, it, everything we have to import all of our hops. Uh, we have to import all of our grains. There, there is malt, uh, not malt. There's there's barley that grows here. But nobody knows how to malt it. So until somebody does that, we all buy everything from outside. All yeast comes in as dry yeast. There's no yeast lab here. So all your wonderful liquid yeast that gives you all your character. No, we don't have any of that unless you mule it in. So I had the roommate of the head lab technician of Imperial Yeast in Portland come in to Chalawasi just on vacation or I don't know what. We got to talking and so she hooked me up with her her, uh, her roommate uh, named Casey as well. And she's been a super support to us. We do a lot of gypsy brewing. And so they sponsored probably six to eight pitches of ours. Uh, and one of those pitches was uh, the A64, if I'm not wrong. Juice is the name of the yeast. And it's incredible. And we used it in a beer called Hazy Charlie with Sacred Valley Brewing Company. It was their brewery cat that just got run over named Charlie. <laughs> so oh, we, made, for Charlie. We, we made a, we made a, a incredible uh, hazy IPA, really juicy, really nice. And it was one of the first uh, in the country and everybody loved it. And when we can get the yeast, people are starting to make a lot more hazies and they taste good. Initially they started making them, just didn't have that kind of juiciness to it. Right. Sure. So it's just like, this is just kind of a fruity pale ale, or this is a really over hopped. It didn't quite work, but lately I've been having a lot of hazy IPAs that the different people are making around. So they're getting some yeast for it. I'm not sure exactly if that's dry or if they're propagating. I know a couple guys are just propagating that same yeast in their breweries. So people are finding a way to make it and, and people really like it. Invictus Brewing Company, uh, they just put out a hazy IPA. 
that they actually used a, a, a mule down packet of juice that they propagated and made real big and put in their beer. And that was really good. So most of it is is kind of imported on, on the down low or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, dry yeast is what we get for the most part. Should bring we a keep yeast, if you're listening, bring a yeast lab. We'll all love it and we'll buy from you and become rich. We, none of us have no, none of us have enough time to do it. Should we keep an eye out for Chelawasi Malting Company? And, yeah. And, and yeast you lab? don't think I have enough on my plate? <laughs> <laughs> you want to become a malting expert and a yeast expert? All of it. All of no, it. No, 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 no. We have enough problems with beer. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, please, anybody that is listening, if you're a super maltster, yeast, technician whatever yeah come down we'll 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 give you all the support we can we would love it <laughs> now i gotta work on the hop farm too like we got the that's other it. stuff like that's the next stage what is the most commonly used hop down there you mentioned that uh what that you'd used uh chinook and cascade in the, the one beer like is is there a, a lot of one or is it just really fluctuate a lot with uh you know it's whatever's of av- whatever's available the seasons argentinian hops are starting to come on I've heard good and bad. I personally haven't had the opportunity to use any. Like I said, I've heard good and bad. Um, it's tricky. It's tricky. Hops are, you know, hops grow a lot of places, but to make them really, really good, there's certain latitudes, there's certain treatments, there's certain cold snaps in the night. There's certain, you know, factors that you need for that. I heard of a group, I emailed a group that I heard about growing hops in a greenhouse in Singapore. And oh, they wow. said, yeah, we got a 30 foot greenhouse. <laughs> I said, wow. Okay. Awesome. I don't know. I, I, I guess they're making the hop. They're going hops out there. But, um, you know, the best place is pretty much where I come from is Willamette Valley, Yakima Valley, right? I mean, as far as in the States, right? So that is kind of the sweet spot, 45 degrees parallels where Salem, Oregon is. Uh, so kind of in, in and around there. But I've heard of a lot of people doing it other places. I don't know how those hops taste. Uh, you'd have to ask your buddy Stan. Well, ask Stan. Yeah. Mr. Hieronymus, he'll <laughs> fill us in. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take another break, but we'll be back very soon to talk more with Chelawasi Beer Company. Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I believe you have my stapler. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We have something interesting this week to talk about. The Best of Georgia Beer. The fourth annual Best of Georgia Beer. Tim will be quick to point out the nomination round of the Best of Georgia Beer is running through December 13th. And on December 16th, we will begin the final voting round of the Best of Georgia Beer. So visit BeerGuysRadio.com to cast your nomination vote now and come back on the 16th to vote in the final round. That's decide right. what is the best of Georgia beer. Yeah, if you know Georgia beer, cast your votes now. It's something we do each year. We have a lot of fun with it. And this year, Brian, special podcast only episode. Oh, the results on December 28th. We'll get it out. We'll there. look forward to that. So anyway, back to our talk with Casey Workman of Chilawasi Beer Company. Casey, I wanted to ask you about uh, kind of the beers that are popular there. I know you said you do a CDA, which that's a style that you don't see in the States much anymore. I think it's kind of a forgotten one. Is there a difference in a black IPA and a CDA is Cascadian Dark Ale? Right. So is there a difference in those two? Uh, one of them helps me market my Oregon angle and the other one doesn't. There you go, man. <laughs> sounds, sounds like a good idea to no, me. No, there's, there's, you, you talk to different people, and uh, yeah, you'll get a lot of people uh, will take you to the mat about the, the, all the big differences and stuff. Like I said, the the idea of having a CDA, something that's close to my heart, is is nice to have down here. And people that come in appreciate it as well. They're like, wow, yeah, you don't, because they say that too. You don't even see that in the States very often. And right. People from the Northwest it. even say that. 
And I, if you find a good one, I'm a big fan. Brian just the other day was telling me he doesn't care if there's ever another black IPA. Or I kind of, I kind of uh, don't, and that so might good. be. Yeah. 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 So. I, I, I beg to differ. I have had a few that were good, and right. have had a bunch that were disappointing. I will admit that when CDA, I saw the acronym CDA, I'm like, I have to Google that. I don't. It's not something oh, didn't I see know a lot. that one. Okay. No, gotcha. I didn't realize yeah. it. And then when I saw what it was, I'm like, oh yes, I've heard of this. Right. So, right. Yeah. What are some of the other popular styles uh, there in Peru? You know, we're 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 starting to come out the last couple of years uh let's see where are we at 2019 the initially people were just trying their reds and their pales like i'm talking about three four years ago a decently dry hopped ipa was a rarity three to four years ago if you believe that so yeah people are trying to do their reds their pales um but now no you see a lot more a uh, german styles you'll you're fine you're starting to see breweries that that start to do their own kind of their own little things um Brewery that opened up next to us a little while ago, uh, Canadian guys doing a lot of sours, which haven't been that big of a deal down here. People like them. People enjoy them. Uh, we put them on tap. They don't sell super fast. Uh, some of the tourists buy them. Uh, they're just starting to get get to like them. But like you were, we were talking about earlier, the hazy IPAs, it's juicy and delicious. People love them. So those are getting to be popular. Uh, we we kind of caught that small wave of the brewed IPA. We made a brewed IPA called Classy and that went, that went over pretty well. People enjoyed that. Um, I talked to John Harris in Portland, though, and he said that's pretty much dead in the Northwest. I was like, we liked it. What do you mean? We, we kind of is it, yeah. is it really? Because that was hot. Like the, hot. the brood IPA was. It was a it was a hot trend, and I'm guessing two years it's ago. not going to survive. Two years ago, yeah. two years ago, I first started hearing yeah. about it. But then we made a hibiscus kind of variation, kind of a white trash dry rosé beer kind of thing. It was it worked out really well too. I really liked the style. Um, but it sounds like people aren't making them that much anymore. New stuff, I don't know. People are uh, using local ingredients here is is always been a very big deal since the very beginning. Uh, so that's what a lot of people drink. Purple corn, they use purple corn and stuff. We used um, ganyapo, which is a germinated purple corn. Amaywanto, which is a gooseberry, a gooseberry, or they call it an Inca berry. We've got an interesting vanilla from the Amazon jungle. Yeah, all kinds of stuff that people can use here. So running out, and that's what I think a lot of the American kind of the Gordon Strongs and the people coming down are starting to realize is that the Amazon rainforest has stuff that the people here don't even know about yet, let alone used in beer, you know? Now, you mentioned something, Casey, that, that makes me think of something. You mentioned the purple corn. Uh, do you do a chicha? We do not do a chicha. I'm not a huge fan of chicha myself. Um, okay. But people, okay. But people do it. People, Like I said, we used guignapo. We used guignapo uh, in an IPA that we made, which is a germinated purple corn. It, it turned out really, really well. Joe Giamatteo, which he brews for Oakshire in Eugene, Oregon. He was down here. He was kind of the, the pilot brewer. He was one of the best, first best brewers here in Peru. And he made a uh, chicha pilsner, which was really, really good. Chicha pilsner. Yeah, okay. It, it was really right. good. You always get points for using local stuff in a new way, new and or interesting, delicious way, just like there. So, uh, so yeah, people are shooting for those kinds of things. You know, you mentioned some people doing sours there, and I was going to ask about that as well because I, I could see like a fruited Berliner. Use your local fruits. Uh, For sure. A little tart, especially with some good Peruvian food there. Yeah. The key is, um, if you especially if you're trying to introduce people to the style that aren't used to it, is to go with what everybody's been doing around uh, around here a lot is a tremendous amount of fruit. Like make it into a smoothie. Just fruit it <laughs> up, just, right? <laughs> fruit, fruit the heck out of it. Now, that goes over extremely well. I think I think that might catch on. Well, and that's the thing too. I do. We do a lot of fruit beers. Fruit here in season is almost free. So passion fruit, take passion fruit example. Passion fruit in the States is about $2 a passion fruit. Here it's a dollar a kilo, which is like almost two, two pounds. No? See. Wow. Yes. Passion fruit guava is a very popular combo in Berliners and other fruited beers here. So it'd make a killing you know peru go down peru stock up brian we should do that go down there <laughs> yeah and, seriously and hoard a bunch of passion fruit so well the, there's an orange part of the equation because it's pog passion fruit orange and guava so yeah yeah you don't have to have the orange just passion you don't fruit you, you, you really don't up. probably not yeah. So, yeah so at cello Ossie beer company you do not brew there now but you actually do a combo of contract and gypsy <laughs> at various breweries around Peru. Is that correct? <laughs> whoever lets us, whoever lets us on the system. Whoever let, okay, <laughs> let us in, let us in. Sure. <laughs> Luckily, thank God, we've, we've made a lot of really good beer friends here in, in Peru. We're super grateful to the, for them. And, you know, it's like calling up old friends and saying, hey, you know, I'm going to make a spin around Cusco. Can you want to make a beer? And so, they're, yeah, yeah, come on, let's do it. Culture here is a little bit different. You miss, you know, your group of friends. 
So it's nice to have beer friends, but we're much more spread out. So a lot of times this is just an excuse to to hang out with people for a good good beer beer day or two uh, to just go down and make a beer with them. So yeah, luckily people have been nice enough. And then a couple of those recipes have stuck uh, that we've developed. And then, like I said, we contract uh, the Black Jesus. The Black Jesus has been going about three years, the Black Jesus CDA. And we just tapped actually three three nights ago. Uh, it's always sunny in Arequipa, which is our new wheat. So that's our second beer in our Chelawasi Beer Company lineup. And then that being said, we made about we made about fifteen collaborations with different breweries uh, over the last year and a half, probably two years. So it, are you referring to their the uh, Cuervo Hitano yeah. project? Is that what, that's how you <laughs> pronounce it? Cuervo, I'm trying so hard. No, no worries. No, no. Cuervo Hitano. Yeah. So Cuervo's crow, right? And that's kind of our yeah. little, uh, logo animal. There's not any crows in Peru, so that's kind of strange. But there's a lot of crows in Oregon. So uh, kind of tying in with our whole Oregon thing. Uh, we tried to put some condors and, and llamas in our you know, in our logo and it it just never worked. We put a crow in there for 15 seconds and it just stuck and hasn't left since. So, uh, the, the, (laughs) the Cuervo Gitano is, yeah, is the gypsy crow. So it's kind of a, an idea of me flying around and making beers with different people and having a good time and sharing, sharing stories. That's pretty awesome way to do things. man. It's a great way to make beer, man. I, I can't tell you how much it's helped me brewing with different brewers on different systems seeing how different people do different things. Yeah, reach out to your, your I mean, in America, the collaborations are, are very common, but it proves a little more guarded. People guard their secrets a little more heavily. Luckily, uh, I've been lucky enough to, to make brew beer with, uh, with a lot of really great people and a lot of really great breweries. That sounds awesome, man. Now, what is next? For Chelawasi. Next is uh, well, like I said, we just we just added our second baby to the lineup. That just happened a couple days ago. Next is building out our tap room. Uh, we're very much a part of the community. Like, come see us, come drink our beer with us here. Uh, so we we got some some building, some addition going on a rooftop terrace that we're working on. The beer tour of Portland, I'm hoping, is going to be a big hit. I took a couple of the owners from Invictus Brewing. Uh, this last September for fresh hop, basically fresh hop season in Oregon, they were, as you would expect, completely blown away. You know what I mean? We went to fresh I hop, we went yeah. to fresh hop yes. fest and 48 something different fresh hop beers. And then you go out to all the beer bars in town and there's a fresh hop, Pilsner, fresh hop, this fresh hop, IPA, double IPA, everything's fresh hop. And it's just, it's wonderful. And that was just the fresh hop aspect of it. We went to the yeast lab, we went to Crosby hop farm. They treated us like Kings that's something I like building bridges. I like, um, I've been making friends gradually back in Portland, which is funny cause I'm from there, but I haven't lived there for about 15 years. So I've reached out to a lot of the beer people in Portland. They've been incredible. That's probably the next thing for us. We're trying to build a bridge maybe back to Portland with who knows what's in the future, but making beer in Portland would be pretty fun. Uh, I got to learn quite a bit more, I think, until I, until I jump, you know, before I jump into that kind of a market, but um, that could be part of the future. Um, we're not sure yet. We're open. The the world is open, man. The world is your oyster, right? Indeed. True. Yeah. Sure. Well, Casey, we have run out of time here, but thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate oh, it. I appreciate it, guys. You guys have been great. Keep up the good work. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Well, that does wrap it up for this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. Coming up next week, Brian, it is time for our 12 Beers of Christmas episode. Ooh. For more crap for info, please follow us online. We are Beer Guys Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great week, and don't forget to drink local. Cheers.